Hi, you're with Chandi, Pat Goodley, and in this video, I'm going to be speaking about the sales funnel dashboard that I've recently constructed. Now, you might have taken a look at a lot of other funnel charts. This is a little different than the usual funnel chart. What I've done is I've used a couple of Excel techniques to make this chart more dynamic, and it also tends to give out more meaningful information than the usual funnel chart. Let's first take a look at uh, how the chart is working and what all information can you get from the chart. So on the left, we have the steps of the sale. So we start with cold leads and then we have sales closed. This is the entire stages of the sales process. And you start with about a thousand leads and then you end up with 280 customers. This is your sales closed. And this is your nice looking funnel chart. And these are two metrics. So one is drop from the first stage and drop from the previous stage. Now let's take a look at how the chart works. So if you click on any of the stages, so let's say I click here, which is email and recontacted, I get to know that uh, in this stage we had 633 people. Uh, since the time we started, which is 1000 people, we are 37%, uh, we have lost 37% of the leads. And since the last stage, uh, which is interested, we have just lost 3.7% of the leads. I can uh, also see that since um, the time I started, uh, I have lost 37% of the leads, but how many leads are those? What's the number? And I can see the number right here. And uh, 24 leads lost from the previous stage. So if I compare these two, the, the number is 24 leads lost from the previous stage. The overall conversion is 27.7%, which is nothing but your final sales closed over your cold leads and the maximum loss in any stage is going to be at the pricing stage which is at 19.9 percent which is right here pricing stage right that's the total that's the entirety of the sales funnel chart now let's take a look at how this chart is built all right i'm not going to go in the depth of explaining every nitty-gritty about the chart but i'm going to give you a good overview of how the chart is created and to do that i've divided uh, the entire chart creation or the dashboard creation into three parts part one two and three and the first part let's talk about uh, the data and how do you actually create a simple funnel chart so i'm going to move over to sheet which is p1 which is part one and let's just take a look at the data and simple funnel chart so we have the stages here which is nothing but your stages we have the leads and we have a dummy let me i mean there's nothing complicated in this data you have the stages and the leads but what is dummy i'm just going to explain it to you in a while first take a look at the logic of the um, the funnel chart now if you were to draw the funnel chart in excel 2016 you already have a standard funnel chart option but i have not used that i've created a trick in excel to make a funnel chart now let's just say that uh, there are two bars the first one maybe is thousand and the second one is maybe 800 so um and if you were to do a normal bar chart the chart would look something like this so this would be left aligned and you would have the normal bar chart like that now in order for me to make this a funnel chart what i have to do is uh, there is a difference this is 800 this is 1000 and there's a 200 difference and i have to just move this uh, at 100 so maybe just like move here and half of the distance is what i will move so maybe right here so i have moved this at 100 not at 200 but at 100 so the difference whatever is the difference i'm just going to move the second bar by half of it and that's exactly is this formula so what i've done is i've taken the difference so uh, your first stage which is your lead stage minus c5 which is this stage divided by two so whatever is the difference so let's say if you have 633 here I'm going to take the difference between the two and divide that by two. So I have the leads, which is my actual number, and I have a dummy, which is going to go inside my chart. Now, picking up these, these three things, I'm going to make a chart. Alt F1 is the shortcut to make a chart. Right click on that, change the chart type, and I put it as a bar chart, but a stacked bar chart. Click on OK. And I get a chart like that. Now, a um, couple of things that I want to clean up in the chart, chart title, no this is also no and i want to reverse the chart so you can see that um, the largest bar is coming in the end and my largest bar is coming in the top so i will click on the chart um sorry i will click on the axis press ctrl 1 to format that and i'll say that hey please reverse the axis so categories in the reverse order okay 
now you can see that uh, the blue is coming first and the orange is coming the second I want to rather have the orange first and then the blue so I'm going to right click on the chart say select data and I'm going to say that hey the dummy needs to come first and the leads need to come second so I will just reorder them by the arrow here click on OK and I have the leads and the dummy reordered and right click on the on the orange which is nothing but your dummy fill as no fill and that's about it you have the chart ready and the the thing that I've done is I've kind of deleted this and I've kind of deleted this made the chart clean and stuff like that also what I've done is uh, I've also nicely placed the chart on the spreadsheet so that every single cell uh, contains a single bar so if you just take a look at this chart which is already made uh, the last bar comes in a cell the second last bar comes in another cell and so on and so forth this is nothing but just the placement of the chart neatly inside your spreadsheet and I've increased the size of column B that's about it right nothing complicated so made the chart and then uh, cleaned it up and then uh, put it uh, in a way in a spreadsheet that every single bar is coming in a single cell now let's just take a look at uh, um, part number two all right in part number two what I'm going to teach you is uh, how do I actually make dynamic selection of the bars so by dynamic selection of the bar what I mean to say is that let's just take a look at the chart here and as soon as I click on any cell uh, which is in the range here so maybe discount offer negotiation anything the bar gets highlighted here that's what I call as dynamic selection so based on the cell selection my bar is getting highlighted right um, now if you just take a look here there are two things that are happening here first of all the bar is getting highlighted the second thing that is happening here is that the font color and the background of the cell is also getting changed so the first thing that I'm going to talk about or teach you is the bar and the second thing is the font color and the background of the cell which is nothing but simple conditional formatting so once you understand the how the bar is working you'll probably be able to able to figure it out uh, that what simple formula that I've used for conditional formatting as well but to highlight the bar I have used a small macro code even before I kind of discuss the macro code with you I want to first give you uh, a good sense of logic that how the bar is working how the bar is getting highlighted and then I will kind of teach you how uh, to replicate the code in your own spreadsheet so let's just go over to uh, sheet number two and let's just understand the logic so assume that we have uh, five cells here so one bar for every cell like the way that we have discussed in part number one so this is cell one cell two cell three cell four and cell five assuming that my current selection is in cell number four so the fourth bar is highlighted now what means by highlighting is that I want to kind of uh, fade away the other bars in gray color and I want to put a red color to the fourth bar because I my current selection is in the fourth bar and as soon as I select the third bar the third bar is going to be in red and rest all the bars are going to be in gray color that's what I mean by selection now how will Excel get to know that which cell is selected so you need to find the row number so for example if you're in the first row you Excel needs to tell the chart that hey row number one is selected so please color row, the first bar of the chart if uh, you're in the second row Excel needs to tell the chart hey row number two is selected so please color the second bar of the chart so on and so forth so I need to have a technique to dynamically get the row number of my current selection right this is the first thing that you need to understand the second thing that you need to under understand is that uh, the user could be clicking anywhere on the spreadsheet right he could be clicking here he could be clicking here he could be clicking here he could be just clicking here as well but your chart and the macro and the highlighting only needs to work when the user is clicking you know from this range to this range from this range to this range right anywhere so uh, this is I think column B I've hidden the columns column B and I think this is column G or a column F I don't know what so from column B to column G or column F that is your row that is your column criteria and from from the first row until the 10th or the 20th or whatever row it says I think the fourth row the fifth row and this is the 14th row or the 15th row. we'll take a look when we kind of make the macro right here now let's just hop over to the macro and once I copy and paste the macro in the spreadsheet you will also also understand that what elements of the macro to change so I'm gonna press alt f11 to go to my macro screen right that's my macro 
Now, since my macro is written in uh, the first sheet, which is chart, you can just take a look here, chart, and uh, my macro is written right here. And I'm just gonna say, take this macro code, control C to copy that, I've already written that for you. And since I'm working now in page number two, so I'm gonna go in page number two right here and paste my macro code right here, right? Now I need to change a couple of things for this macro to run absolutely fine in my spreadsheet. Now let's see what all do we do I have to change. Now, um, let's just take a look at the area selection. So my area selection is going to be from B column to G column, right? So B to G. Now let's just take a look at the code here. So I'm saying that the if the active cell dot column is greater than or equal to two, which is correct, B is column two, and active cell dot column is less than or equal to seven, and I think G is number seven, so two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's correct, so G is number seven. And let's just take a look at the row numbers as well. So my um, data is kept right from the fifth row, not the headers, the fifth row, and up till the 14th row. So fifth till 14th is my uh, range. So I'm gonna change num number four to five here, and uh, the last range to 14 here, right? So that's one change that I've made. The second change that I'm gonna make is that, uh, now if this condition is meeting, this is the condition that is satisfying your area of selection. Now if this condition is meeting, what I wanna do is, I wanna take that row number and I wanna paste it somewhere on the spreadsheet. And let's just say that I wanna paste it in A15. Cell link is the named cell on uh, the chart sheet, but I'm gonna do that in my range A15. That means this cell right here, A15. And I'm gonna subtract three from it. Why three? Because one, two, three, and four rows are empty in the top. So I wanna subtract uh, four rows from the top, right? So I'm gonna say that uh, active cell dot row minus four empty rows that are there on the top. Right, that's another change that I wanna make. And let's just see that. Um, now, it says that set my chart active sheet dot chart objects chart two, but not necessarily this chart is named as chart two. Let's just take a look at what's the name of the chart. So I'm gonna click on the chart and I'm gonna go in my view tab and activate the formula bar. And let's just take, this is called as chart one. So I'm gonna go in my macro code and call this as chart one right and this color coding is all fine uh, I think I just have to change the cell link again here to a15 that's what I wrote here and then again a15 I think that should be pretty much it and then let's just see if the code works fine or not now when, as soon as I select here uh, the code should color the chart absolutely fine so and it, it is only going to work until this range because you specified the row numbers and the column numbers. So the time that you're working in this range, the chart is going to work fine. And the time that you're off this range, the chart will stop working, right? Because you're not in the selected area. That was part number two, which was for dynamic selection. Now let's just hop over to part number three. All right, so in part number three, I'm gonna teach you how do you actually calculate the metrics and do the conditional formatting. Uh, although I have written the macro code in uh, part number two, but the macro code is not there in part number three. So assume that that uh, one of the bars is getting highlighted, So and that's how we're working. All right, so this is a simple, straightforward formula uh, to calculate the first metric. The first metric says that how much have you, percentage, have you lost since the, this is the first stage of the process, or the first stage, which is your, which is your cold leads. So if you just take a look, uh, you just take the difference between the two and you say minus one and you convert that into a percentage, that is gonna give you that how much of a total loss have you had since the time you started collecting the leads, right? So at every stage, this in, this will is going to increase. The next metric is going to take the previous stage. So if I have to you know, take a look at this stage, which is interested, I just take the previous stage, which is 720 minus 657, I get the difference and minus one and I convert that into a percentage sign again. Pretty straightforward, nothing complicated, uh, just two straightforward formulas to calculate my metrics. Now, um, like I said, um, you also had to color the entire line which is getting you know highlighted and that is happening in my chart. So what I've done is I have, uh, you know, used a simple conditional formatting 
to find the row number and the row number is nothing given by your uh, macro itself so here uh, in uh, the second sheet we used this cell which is uh, a15 in my chart I have used this cell which is cell link and the reason why it's not visible to you because I have uh, uh, formatted in that way but if I kind of change the format you can see that right now the fifth row is colored and then the fourth row is colored so as soon as I get the row number I'm going to use the rows function so I'm just going to select all of that and just show you the function so home conditional formatting and I'm going to go and manage rules and I'm going to click on edit rule and this is the little formula that I've used so I'm saying that if the rows formula is matching cell A1 which is nothing but this cell then please format the cell in gray and color the font in red with bold that's about it and this formatting is applicable to uh, B4 to G13 so B4 to G13 which is right until here that's about it so yeah I mean as soon as you click here the formula uh, triggers the macro the macro uh, triggers the row number and the chart gets highlighted and the conditional formatting is also highlighting the entire row as well all right one last thing which is remaining we have calculated the two metrics we have done the conditional formatting the one thing which is left which you can clearly see on the dashboard of the chart is the four uh, main metrics on the top so which is overall conversion rate which is nothing but uh, 280 divided by 1010 uh, and that gives you 27 percent and then uh, two or three other metrics now what I've done is I have used dynamic text boxes now this is nothing but a text box and the way it is changing is because I have linked it with a formula and if you just take, scroll down on the dashboard all the metrics are being calculated right here and they are being changed automatically so you can just take a look at these formulas here they are very simple nothing complicated and uh, these formulas are then getting linked to the text box here if you want to know that how do you link a formula to a text box I'll leave you a link where you will learn how to um, understand the linkage between the formula and the text box to create dynamic text boxes right and I've given a lot of examples there so you can just take a look at that so these are four text boxes linked with formulas kept it on the top and this you have the chart here right well that was all about the funnel chart I hope you like it in case uh, you have any questions um, while implementing this in your own uh, data please do not hesitate to write to me or leave a comment and i'll be more than happy to help you out thank you so much for watching this and you take care of yourselves Bye bye